This is Brooklyn St. Michael with the School of Aquaponics and this is Ask the Aquaponics God, preventing you from becoming a biscuit-headed grower. Now today, ladies and gentlemen, we have an episode of Ask the Aquaponics God coming from some young bucks. Some young bucks. We got some high schoolers and we're gonna go ahead and help them out on a quick blueprint. The Aquaponic God is on the move right now, so I had to stop real quick, make this video, and get it out and help the young generation get out there and get their aquaponics on. So let's start real quick and give you guys a quick update and show you the video and uh, see what these guys are asking. Hi, we're the Green Charter Aquaponics team. I'm Boris, this is Sean, this is Brando, this is Natalia, Celeste, and Shane is our cameraman. Um, the teachers who lead us are Mr. T, our campus Hello. director, and Mr. Sommets, our on-site science teacher. Right now, we have a fish tank. We have two biofilters, a physical and a biofilter over here. We have three grow beds and a sump tank somewhere under there. That will be. It will be. And we need a blueprint for our piping system. So we'll send you a blueprint of what we have so far. And we are asking kindly for your expertise in piping systems so we know where to drill and how to set up the pipes. So right now we're planning to use clay balls and we have another question. Is it better to use clay balls or a deep water system? All right, so you guys are looking for some help on a blueprint. Okay, so let's help you out real quick. So it looks like you guys have a, are setting up a media bed system. And this is fine. This is for like a little school experiment or whatnot. So this is great. So this is how I would suggest you guys run the plumbing for this system. We're going to start at the sump tank. It should be underneath uh, the lowest point in the system. And you guys are going to place it underneath those um, IBC totes, those half cut IBC totes that you have. And you're going to place the sump there. Now in the sump tank, this is where you're going to put your pump. You're gonna put it either, uh, most likely you're gonna put it inside, depending on the type of pump you have, most likely you're gonna put it inside the sump. From the sump, the pump is gonna extend up and it's gonna come out and it's gonna run to one of the fish tanks or to your uh, your actual fish tank. That's where it's gonna go. One portion of it is gonna run there. You're gonna place a, a, um, a ball valve on there. Let me see if I have anything. Well, you guys should know what a ball valve is. A ball valve on there, and that's where you're gonna regulate the flow coming into there. From there, that fish tank, you're gonna have an outlet on there um, that's going to extend all the way to the bottom. We call it solid, a solids lifting overflow. It's going to extend all the way to the bottom of that fish tank. And this is what's going to allow you to remove solids from that tank. So it's going to extend to the bottom. Let me see if I have, a, I have some IBC toast right here, man. So it's going to, it's going to, it's going to come here. You're going to place the elbow on here and it's going to extend all the way down here like, like this. Um, you can give it about an inch, maybe half an inch. And it's going to be removing these solids, you know, all these little solids down here. It's going to be removing those out of the tank. So you're going to make sure you put that on there. And then you're going to connect it here. You can connect it here. I use these unicells. You can use a bulkhead fitting. But I use these unicells, unicells here that are fairly easy to put together. Um, and then they extend out. You put your um, an elbow here. And you're going to return this line back into the sump tank. So that's going to complete the portion of the fish tank fairly simple just going to go in a circular motion It's going to remove those solids out bring them back to the sump tank the sump tank is going to pick up those solids and then you're going to bring the pump up again where it's where it is extending out on the same pipe you're going to place uh you can place a t on there or however you're going to configure it but you need to use that same line coming off the pipe and then you're going to run that line to each one of your media beds each one of your media beds is going to have that you're going to place ball valves on each one of those beds to regulate the flow you need to regulate the flow um, in those media beds. And then from there, um, what you'll have is inside of the media bed, you'll place what, what is called a bell siphon. You guys can look these up, see how to build them. They're fairly simple to build. You use a bell siphon in there that's going to automatically drain your, um, your, your system once it, uh, once it fills up to a certain level. It needs to drain because it needs to provide oxygen to the root zone um, of the plants that are in there. So it's going to drain it. And then um, the bell siphon is going to then connect, and then it's going to run back to the sump tank. So in the media bed, it's going to—that's where it's going to uh, uh, contain the solids that are being picked up from the sump tank, and it's going to keep it in there. It's going to mineralize, break it down, and then it's going to be uh, uh, useful for um, the plant development. So 
that's how I would run that system there. Now, you need to make sure when you have your sump tank, because these are gonna, all these, these media beds that you have, they're gonna be flooding and draining. So you need to make sure that your sump tank is gonna be large enough to accommodate the, uh, the flow of water that could be coming from each of those, sump t uh, each of those uh, media beds that you have. So if you have two, um, those are half, so there's probably about, let's say just 150 gallon, so there'll be about 150 gallons. You need to have a sump tank that's big enough to accommodate 300 gallons of water just in case both of those beds flood at the same time. Do you understand me, my young bucks, the young generation of aquaponic growers? Do you understand me? I believe you do. Okay, so with that being said, for this setup, you guys don't need an extra biological filter. The biological filter is part of the media bed. Those media balls that you're going to be putting in there, those things provide a biological surface area for um, nitrifying bacteria to colonize and also for mineralization as well. So you don't need any extra biological filter. Now, which one is better from a media bed or the, um, the DWC, the floating raft unit? It's all relative. It depends. It's not a one-size-fits-all solution here, ladies and gentlemen. So you have to uh, determine what's going to be your usage. If it's for commercial usage, you better bet your bottom dollar we're going with the floating raft or the DWC um, uh, setup over the media bed just because of labor requirements and things like that. But for basic home setups, you know, hobby setups, school experiments like you guys are doing, a media bed works fine. That works fine. It works fine to get you some practice in. Um, and to, and to get you started and get you rolling it doesn't have it has less components that you have to worry about um, The stocking densities are, are a lot less uh, that, you, that you can work with so it's just easier For in that sense, it's easier to start get started with and get used to it the DWC bed You know, it's it, it when it's running at max capacity It's it could be much more efficient and much more effective uh, than a media bed so that's pretty much it just depends you know it just depends for you guys to set up a media bed is just fine you don't really have any experience a media bed is fine media you don't have to add a extra whole bunch of extra um uh, uh components to it and things like that that is perfectly perfectly fine all right so i hope you guys are getting this right now i get pumped when i see the young generation man that's why i love aquaponics because it takes the young guys the young guys and gals like you guys and it gets you guys out there and thinking. And we need the young minds to get out there and get to thinking. Oh man, I love it, man. This is like what got me started. I was a young buck too. So with that being said, man, hopefully this, this helps you guys out. Um, and uh, the Aquaponic Guide is back on the move. So with that being said, shout out to you guys and keep it going. And I don't wanna see any of you guys in trouble. Keep getting your aquaponics on, all right? This is Brooklyn St. Michael with the School of Aquaponics. Woo!